Hi, everybody. Um, today we are going to discuss um, how to find the zeros of polynomials. So um, what happens if you look at your polynomial and it is not easily factorable? How do you even start finding the zeros of your polynomial? Well, one tool that we have is called the rational root theorem. So the rational root theorem gives you a list of potential answers that you can try and you use synthetic division to test them until you find um, a zero that works. So it says if you have a polynomial with integer coefficients and every rational solution is in the following form, plus or minus p over q. So our p values represent all of the factors of your constant term which is the term at the end, and your q values represent all of the factors of your lead coefficient. So you find the factors and then you create every combination of the p over q to give you a um, comprehensive list of numbers to try. So if I have something like this um, and I look and I say, okay, I can't easily um, factor this polynomial, I can create a list of potential answers. So first I'm going to list out my p-values, which are all of the factors of 8. So I have 8, 4, 2, and 1. And then I'm going to list all my q-values, which are the factors of my lead coefficient, which in this case is 2. So 2 and 1. Now I'm going to create all of the combinations of um, plus or minus p over q. So my options are plus or minus, so I'm going to first do all of my p-values over 2. So 8 over 2, 4 over 2, 2 over 2, 1 over 2. Now I'm going to do all of my p-values over 1. So 8 over 1, 4 over 1, 2 over 1, 1 over 1. Now of course some of these can be simplified. So we know that 8 over 2 is 4, 4 over 2 is 2, 2 over 2 is 1, 1 half, 8 over 1 is 8, we've already used 4, we've already used 2, and we've already used 1. So this is a list of all of my potential answers. So that's 10 potential answers because plus or minus for each of them. So then you would use synthetic division to start checking um, zeros until you find one that works. So. Um, let's give one of these a try. Now, these can be a little bit tedious, so you'll notice on the homework I will give you hints of where to start. But um, let's look at this uh, polynomial, and let's start by listing out all of our potential zeros using the rational root theorem. So I can see that my, um, my constant is 20. So, and my uh, lead coefficient is 1, which is really nice. So I'm going to list out all of my possible p over q values. So plus or minus, we have 20 over 1. Um, we have 10 over 1. We have 5 over 1. We have 4 over 1. We have 2 over 1. And we have 1 over 1. So now we go through the process and we start checking. So you could check... Um, positive or negative of any of these numbers, and one of them will eventually work. So let's just start by checking um, positive 1, and let's see what happens. So we're going to use synthetic division, and remember we're looking for a remainder of 0, because that means that it is a 0. So I do 1, negative 7, negative 7, 4, 4, and 24. So since my remainder is not 0, I know that positive 1 is not a factor. So I'm going to try something else. Uh, let's try negative 1. So you'll see that um, synthetic division will become extremely useful because it's so quick in terms of um, checking your values. Okay, so since we have a remainder of 0, we have determined that um, negative 1 is in fact one of our answers. So since negative 1 is an answer, we know that the factor is x plus 1. These go together. And let's see what we have left in our polynomial. What we have left is x squared minus 9x plus 20. Um, now from here, I can factor that using magic x.
and I am able to find all three of my zeros. So the rational root theorem just gives you a place to start. And then once you have found one of your zeros, oftentimes you will be able to factor the rest um, using one of our previously mentioned techniques. Alrighty. At this time, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this problem a try. Um, I would like you to list out all of your potential answers, but just to save you a little bit of time, um, you can start by checking x equals negative 2. Alrighty. Um, so here is the work shown out. So you can see that when we list out our answers, we have a lot of different, uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 2. We have 16 potential answers. So yes, it can be a little bit time consuming in getting to the right one. But if you check a negative 2, you see that we have a remainder of 0, which means it is a factor. So um, x plus 2 is our factor, and then this is our remaining polynomial, which can be um, further factored. So our answers are negative 2, negative 3, and positive 4. Alrighty, so one more concept that I want to talk about today is called the Irrational Conjugates Theorem. Um, so this theorem is essentially saying that um, if you have zeros that have um, a constant and a radical, or even just a radical, um, they are always going to come in pairs, at what's called a conjugate. So for example, if you have an answer that is 1 minus the square root of 2, you are always going to have another answer that is 1 plus the square root of 2. Now this comes from when you're solving, and you take the square root, we always have the plus or minus square root. So you'll never see a case where you just have one or the other. You are always going to have both. That being said, if you have an answer like positive root 5, you are also going to have an answer negative root 5. This is called the irrational conjugates theorem. So if you are told one of the zeros, they may not tell you the other, but it is implied that it also must exist. So if they ask you to write a polynomial function of the least degree that has um, rational coefficients and a lead coefficient of 1, this is essentially saying like the most simplified version that you can. And it tells you that the zeros are 3 and 2 plus root 5. We know that according to the rational root theorem, or rational conjugate theorem, sorry, that there must be another 0 at 2 minus root 5. Okay, which means that the least degree of this function will be 3. So um, we are going to actually kind of do the reverse of what we've been doing. We've been taking factors and turning them into zeros. Now we're going to take zeros and turn them into factors. So if my 0 is positive 3, my factor is going to be x minus 3. And if my 0 is 2 plus 5, my factor is going to be x minus, and you need to group this, it's extremely important, 2 plus 5. You're subtracting the entire factor. And if my factor, or if my 0 is 2 minus root 5, I'm going to have x minus grouped 2 minus root 5. Alrighty, equals f of x. Now I just need to multiply it out. So the first thing I'm going to do in here is, in fact, distribute my negatives. So I have x minus 2 minus root 5 over x minus 2 plus root 5. And then to help me simplify this, I'm going to use a little trick. I notice that both of these terms are um, x minus 2. So I'm going to treat them as a single term. Here's this. So if I do, um, I'm going to multiply my last two binomials first. If I do this term times this term, I get x minus 2 squared. Now, if I take my front x minus 2 and I multiply it here, I get plus 5 root 5 times x minus 2. But then here I do minus root 5 times x minus 2. So they actually cancel out. So once again, these two terms multiply, cancel out these two terms that multiply. 
Um, and so all I have to do left is multiply my last two terms, so I get minus the square root of 25, which is 5. Now I do need to continue simplifying within um, this group, so I have x minus 3 um, times, and then I'm going to multiply out this um, binomial, so I have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 5, x squared minus 4x minus 1. And then I just need to multiply my binomial times my trinomial. So I have x cubed minus 4x squared minus x minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 3. And then if I combine like terms, I get x cubed minus 7x squared plus 11x plus 3. So yes, the multiplying out of these problems can be a little bit um, tricky and time consuming. However, if you use that trick of grouping your first, um, the x minus 2, it makes it a little bit easier. But overall, um, the main thing I would like you to take from this problem is how to turn your zeros into factors. All right, at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, thank you for giving this problem a try. So, since um, I have zeros of 2 and 3 plus root 7, I know that I also have a 0 of 3 minus root 7. So you can see that um, I created my factors by subtracting all of my zeros. I distributed out the negatives here. And then um, notice that here I grouped my x minus 3 terms um, to help me when I'm multiplying my back to these two um, expressions. And then from there, I multiplied out my binomial, simplified, and I had my binomial times my trinomial. So this is really good practice of um, your computation skills and your ability to execute these difficult types of problems. But well, once again, the main uh, takeaway here should be turning your zeros into factors.